This video is part of a series. It's heavy in scientific terminology and may expect familiarity with previous videos. If you're confused, please watch the rest of the playlist up until this point, or check out my genetics terminology document, both of which are linked in the description. Thanks! Merle is a unique and fascinating pattern. It causes irregular patches of dilution and or white, and it can cause, though doesn't always, blue eyes and pink leathers. In dogs, each eye being a different color is called wall eyes, and Merle dogs are commonly wall-eyed, blue and something. The size of the patches, and whether any of them are white or if they're all just diluted, is pretty random. Some Merle puppies are born lighter and get darker as they get older, and this seems to be more common in some breeds than others. Merle dogs who manage to stay darker despite definitely being Merles are referred to as muddy. The Merle genes are, unfortunately, heterozygous beauty, homozygous danger. Dogs with a double dose of Merle, say that three times fast, have much more intense white markings covering almost their entire body. They're frequently blind, deaf, or both. Their eyes are often notably smaller than non-double Merle dogs. Merles also have an increased risk for sunburn and skin cancer on areas where their skin is pink, but that's not exclusive to Merles. Any dog who lacks pigment in an exposed skin area is at higher risk than a dog who doesn't. Melanin is pretty important for absorbing dangerous sun stuff, so not having it is kind of bad. Just ask any white person who's gotten a sunburn when it wasn't even that sunny out. Merle dog's eyes are also more light sensitive. This homozygous Merle phenotype is called double Merle because Merle was traditionally understood to be caused by a simple single allele. Thus, a quote-unquote double Merle would have double the amount of copies of that allele than a normal healthy Merle has. We found out very recently that Merle is actually six different alleles, so now double Merle means any dog who doesn't have any non-Merle alleles, represented by little m. Merle only affects you melanin, so it'll only show up on black-based markings. But any black-based marking can have it. Even brindles, it'll show up on the black parts of the brindle, but not the red. It can show up on masks, it can show up on Isabella dogs, etc, etc. It even shows up on Wolf Grey's agouti markings, because it affects the eumelanin bands of their agouti hairs, even though it doesn't touch any of the theomelanin. That means it won't appear on any red markings, and that any fully red dog won't display it. I've heard that red dogs who test positive for having merle but don't show any are called cryptic merles, but I've also heard them called phantom merles, and that sounds way more badass. There are some exceptions to the no red rule, though. One. Fully red Merle dogs may still have blue eyes. I was unable to find if their noses could still be affected, since a red dog's nose will always show their hidden black base color. Keep in mind that dogs who are red because of sable still have some, you know, sable black-tipped hairs, and the eumelanin at those tips of the hairs is affected by Merle. We sometimes see sables who have visible Merle patches because Merle is affecting the tips of their sabling. So depending on the intensity and the pattern, even a clear sable can show faint Merling, even though it's not very common. And lastly, Double Merles. A single Merle allele can be hidden by red, but two Merle alleles always mess a doggy up. Red dogs are not immune to double Merling. Always, always, always gene test a dog for Merle before any breeding. No matter what, Merle is super easy to hide. It might blend into blue or brindle, or be hard to see on a long-haired dog, or get hidden by normal non-Merle white spotting, or just a play not show up at all. We'll talk about this last one more in a minute. So earlier, I said Merle is caused by multiple alleles. What are those alleles? Well, first of all, they're all on the same locus. They all cause Merle, but they all cause slightly different variations of Merle. Merle alleles are caused by various sign insertions, a kind of mutation that- Oh my god! Anyway, different sign insertions are different Merle alleles, and the longer the insertion is, the more it fucks up the dog's pigment. Everything seems to be co slash incomplete dominant with everything else, so I'm just going to go in insertion length order. And also keep in mind that all this is super new, so a lot of this info is non-definitive. First, to reiterate, no insertion is the normal, non-Merle little m. The shortest insertion is MC, which causes un very unusual Merles in that they don't look like Merles. When homozygous, which would be terrible for any other Merle allele, MC MC Merles often still don't show any Merling. MC other Merle heterozygotes also just look like normal Merles and aren't associated with any of the hearing or sight defects that other double Merles have. We need to do more research. More research needs to be done first. But it's possible that MC is the only Merle allele that's safe to breed to other Merles without risking hearing loss or sight. M and C are for Merle and Cryptic, because these types of Merles are called Cryptic Merles, presumably instead of Phantom Merles because MP just didn't sound as cool. Sorry to anyone who plays wizards in video games, I guess. 
By the way, just to emphasize how huge genomes are and how complicated even a single allele is, the smallest Merle insertion that doesn't even really do anything because it's so teeny tiny is only 200 to 230 base pairs long. That's 200 to 230 individual rungs on the DNA ladder. Not to be confused with MC, MC plus is a different allele, but acts more or less the same as MC. Next up is MA, which the scientific article that found these alleles describes as not causing a recognizable Merle pattern, but still does cause a, quote, diluted brownish hue. The article only has one picture of an MA little M dog, and I don't see it, sorry. In combination with other longer Merle alleles, MA works together to create bizarre, irregular Merle patterning rather than being uniform across the dog's body. And yes, when I say combine with other Merle alleles, I do mean double Merling. MA other Merle heterozygotes have a lower risk for all the nasty complications of your typical double Merle, but that doesn't mean that it's not a dice roll that should never be made. Following the pattern, after MA comes MA+. We're finally getting to the Merles that look like Merles, although the pattern MA plus causes is described as muted and undefined. There don't seem to be distinct patches so much as a kind of general modeling of lighter diluted areas. I think it acts with other Merles the same way that MA does. Those interactions, by the way, when they do come out looking weird, are called atypical Merles, which is what the A in MA stands for. This is Merle atypical and Merle atypical plus, just like how the C in MC was for cryptic. Next, we have just plain old capital M, the one we already knew about, and what we thought all the other Merles were before all this recent testing gave them new names and identities. It's sometimes called classic Merle or standard Merle, and it works the way we thought all Merles did. It causes standard Merle patches, more commonly diluted than white, and when homozygous, it goes crazy and just eats the dog's welfare in one whole bite. Lastly, Harlequin Merle, which is really confusingly named because it's not responsible for the famous Harlequin markings seen on Great Danes. Those are an entirely different thing. I would call this another case of dog breeders don't fucking communicate, but I believe this one was intentionally named after the real Harlequin because they look kinda similar. I'll talk about real Harlequin later. The Harlequin Merle allele, you know the drill by now, it's MH, are more likely to have white patches as opposed to dilute patches than other Merle types. The areas that are still only diluted tend to be comparatively very light. Interestingly, the article that discovered these alleles suggests that MH on its own, heterozygous with non-Merle little m, can cause deafness, as if the dog was a double Merle. As I've said, everything seems to be codominant with everything else, and I do not have the time, energy, or references to draw out every single possible Merle interaction, but my sources in the description include a photos of a few, and mostly they seem to just look like a combination of both, or somewhere in between the two Merle alleles. Merle alleles, being the bastard children that are transposons, are unstable and can become other things. Specifically, all of the M locus alleles that aren't little m, because that one doesn't have an insertion, can, within individual cells, make their own insertions shorter but not longer. This happens randomly across the dog's body. Big patches of darker, less intense merling in a merle dog may very well consist of cells that have shorter insertions, so they're doing less merling and thus they're darker. If this happens in certain reproductive parts where gametes are made, the dog could possibly pass down that shorter allele instead of the one they inherited. So for example, a capital M little m dog's capital M alleles might jump around and turn into MA pluses. And if they do this where the gametes are made, then the capital M little m dog could give an MA plus allele to their offspring instead. However, that capital M little m dog won't ever be able to pass MH onto their offspring, because MH is longer than capital M, and Merle transposons can only get shorter, not longer. Merle has one known modifier. I'd be willing to bet that it affects all visible Merle alleles, but I have no way of confirming that because this modifier is exclusive to the Great Dane breed, and I have no idea which Merle alleles Great Danes have. Yes, I know I said exclusive, and I wouldn't be covering exclusive genes, but this one is fun, and it's also very famous, so I've gotta talk about it. So normally most Merles, when heterozygous with little m, cause a lot of diluted areas and then sometimes white patterns. Harlequin, as a modifier, turns all of those diluted areas white. So the dog's got some blotchy gray patches and then boom, along comes capital H and now they're all white. Look at that. Some of the colored patches might still be dilute. If you see a patch that's mixed full color and dilute, that means one of two things. Either they're a double Merle, boo! Or the white that you're seeing isn't, or at least not entirely, real Harlequin, but rather white spotting in a similar shape to Harlequin. Yes, Merle is spots which are white, but white spotting is a different thing, and we'll talk about it in a later video. Think like normal dog white, the one that doesn't cause all the ethics problems, it's that one. Regardless of the cause, this pattern is called Merlequin. When Harlequin affects clear sable Merle, that's called Faunikin. 
Anyway, it's on the H locus caused by the dominant capital H allele, while the normal non-Harlequin allele is little h. Capital H is also a strong contender for homozygous lethal. So a heterozygous capital H little h merle dog will have a cool white pattern, but a homozygous capital H capital H merle dog will fucking die as an embryo and be reabsorbed by the mother. And of course, being a modifier, heterozygous capital H little h dog not displaying any merle will have nothing because a modifier can only modify the thing it's a modifier of. It can't do anything on its own. I can't find anything that says whether or not a non-merle dog whose homozygous capital H capital H will still die. From my general knowledge of how genes tend to work, I think that they would be okay, but please don't quote me on that. Similar to the last time we dealt with transposons, a Punnett square by nature tells you which alleles are actually going to be passed because they represent already made gametes fusing during sexual reproduction. So when you're solving these squares, don't get stressed out worrying about all the possible alleles a merle might shorten into. Just worry about the ones I'm showing you. If you want to challenge yourself though, instead of doing a multi-locus Punnett square, this time try making an imaginary merle dog with any merle allele you want, and draw multiple separate squares breeding them to a non-merle, with each square being a different way their merle allele might have shortened. Alternatively, you can just do a multi-locus Punnett square for merle and harlequin, that's fun too. For the rest of you, since Merle is co-dominant with every other Merle, and the names for patterns can be indistinct and weird, instead of giving me an exact phenotype, just tell me if the dog is non-Merle, technically Merle but probably not going to show it, visibly Merle, or double Merle. Parents too. So the parents are a double Merle, that's the capital M, capital M homozygote, and a cryptic Merle, a dog who is technically genetically a Merle, but it isn't visible. All of their kids will be regular Merles. We may or may not be able to see MC having any effect, but even if it did anything, it would be negligible. As we currently understand it, at least. Since we covered the H locus, I'll drop a square in here for that too. Both parents are Harlequins. Their kids each have a 25% chance of not being Harlequin, a 50% chance of being Harlequins, and a 25% chance of... dying in utero. If this is the same pair as the last practice square, then only one of the parents is a harlequin, the merle, while the cryptic merle is only carrying harlequin, since it's invisible if it doesn't have any patches to modify. So even though only one parent is visibly a harlequin, each puppy still has a 25% chance of not surviving long enough to be born. Anyway, uh, don't breed merles together, have a nice day. Uh, next time we'll talk about the white that doesn't mess you up as much, probably. See you there? Yeah? Yelling? Interrupting my take?